it is the return of Laurie Strode to the franchise where little did we know some of the events unfolding behind the scenes seem to explain what we got in our latest trilogy because as we have said before on this channel the more things change the more they stay the same and while it may seem easy to blame Jamie Lee Curtis for wanting to kill this franchise off not once but twice maybe she saw the writing on the wall for the franchise's legacy with Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers, being so abysmal that it was pulled from theaters before Halloween even came in 1995. H2O seemed to be plagued from the start, having multiple scripts, titles, and masks. Jamie Lee Curtis and John Carpenter came with heavy demands, and then... There is the Weinstein brothers wreaking their usual havoc during production similar to what they did with Scream. And despite the chaos, H2O became the number one film in the franchise at that time. Meaning it would only be a matter of time before we got a sequel. There are five chaotic stories behind the making of Halloween H2O that you may never have or probably heard of. History behind Halloween H2O is definitely interesting and saw a series of changes. The movie's score was originally done by John Ottoman, but producers disliked the score. It had not paired well with the film, causing producers to use cues from the Scream movies. They were horrified because it wasn't like the temp score and the where I'd really completely departed from the, the music that was in the temporary score. It was very over-orchestrated, very detailed. It wasn't a score for a Halloween movie. The mask originally used had been used during the first three weeks during filming until the Weinsteins had nixed it. KNB Myers mask was unlike the others having been more ghost-like and expressionless than before. The next mask was created from a mold in part six, causing them to reshoot the film and all the scenes that featured the original mask. However, this caused a stir with producers, so Steve Winston was brought in to create another mask and another round of reshoots were done for only the close-ups. Ah, but they forgot one close-up and resorted to doing one scene with a CGI mask. So if you pay close attention, you will see three different masks in the film but in total, four different masks were used to make the film. Number four. Jamie Lee Curtis not only really, really, really wanted to kill Michael Myers, but she wanted the franchise to end. And I have said from the beginning, so we're gonna frickin' kill this fucker. <laughs> you know, it was like, so the end of the movie is that I End it. However, producer Mustafa Akai, who had been the producer for every Halloween up until that point, had it written into the writer's contracts that they were not legally allowed to kill off the series villain. This caused friction during pre-production. So I go to the office really pissed. I walk in, I'm like, what the fuck is happening here? I don't understand this. We had a stake through the heart. We had a head chopped off. We had it all. And they looked at me and said, Jamie, there's a clause in the contract with Mustafa Akkad that says you can't kill him. Curtis almost left the production just weeks before filming, having not agreed with the drafts of the story up until that point. You know, I'm gone. There's no way I am doing this again. And they said, how can we do this with you? I said, you can't. I am not doing this. The whole construction of the story is that this woman stops running, turns back, and faces him, mano a mano, until the death. And she's willing to die for this. Scream franchise writer Kevin Williamson came up with the paramedic storyline that satisfied both Curtis and Akkad. 
Curtis only agreed to be a part of the film under one condition, that no footage hinting towards a sequel would be presented by the film. This compromise was the final scene in which Curtis beheads Michael, which we find out in Halloween Resurrection that Meyer swapped places with a paramedic. The footage of the swap was shot along with the movie but not revealed until the following film. In the end, her heart was not in it admittingly, and she mainly did it for the paycheck. It was a pay gig for me. No, I'm not joking. I got paid. So I, there was, you know, when somebody contracts with you, and you're like, maybe I'll get that. Maybe you know what I mean? You kind of, like, spend the money a little in your head. You know, it was going to give a little cushion in my family. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff on the table here. It wasn't just like... So they said, I said, okay. Number three. Halloween 7 was originally intended to be a sequel to Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers, originally titled Michael Myers, Lord of the Dead. The story would have opened immediately after the events of the previous film, where Tommy Doyle had discovered that the entire town of Haddonfield was involved in a conspiracy to control Michael Myers. Kevin Williamson from Scream fame was up next. In his original treatment for H2O, it included a scene referencing the events in the previous three films connecting the continuity and canon. The scene was filmed and it involved Sarah, a student at the school where Laurie Strode teaches under the name Carrie Tate. Sarah recites a class report on the Haddonfield murders going into great detail about Jamie Lloyd, Laurie Strode's daughter from Halloween 4 through 6, and mentions Jamie losing her parents in a car accident, as was the explanation in those sequels for Laurie Strode's absence. Her report chronicles Jamie being hunted and eventually killed by her uncle, Michael Myers. After hearing the presentation in the classroom, a grief-stricken Tate retreats to a restroom and vomits. Williamson wanted to create an explanation for Lori's death in the previous movies and her resurrection while keeping the fourth, fifth, and sixth film in the continuity. As we would find out in that version of the film, Lori faked her death to go into the witness protection program with her son under the alias Carrie Tate. Number two. John Carpenter was originally in negotiations to direct H2O since Jamie Lee Curtis wanted to reunite the cast and crew from the original. It was believed that Carpenter had opted out because he was not interested in the sequel. However, this is not the case as he agreed to direct the movie but under two conditions. Having felt slighted in the amount of money everyone else made from the original Halloween, he demanded $10 million and he wanted a three-picture deal with Dimension Films. Carpenter felt the hefty fee was compensation for the revenue he never received from the original film, a matter that was still a point of contention between Carpenter and producer Mustafa Akkad even after 20 years had passed. When Akkad and the Weinstein brothers balked at Carpenter's demands, he walked away from the project. Number one. Ah, Corey, you polarizing SOB, who was one of the factors in why Halloween ends was a dumpster fire. But this is not the first copycat storyline in the franchise, as one was pitched 20 plus years before as Halloween 7, Two Faces of Evil. The character of Charlie, played by Adam Han Bird, was originally written as a copycat killer. And uh, he was paying homage to Michael Myers. And of course, that doesn't work out so well for Charlie in the end, because you can't steal Michael Myers' identity and, and get away with it. He's going to come back and, and, uh, and take care of you. So, um, so I, got, I got the role. And, um, and then about two or three weeks later, Steve gave me a call and said, we're rewriting the script. We really want you to be a part of it, and we love what you did. But um, as things change, I think you're going to wind up being the horny best friend, which I was fine with too, because that's always fun. <laughs> Romantic dinner, candlelight, soft music, animal sex. Charlie, who was the progeny of Michael Myers and a nurse he raped while institutionalized, who began stalking and killing girls at an all women's boarding school. Only this was not the major twist of the defunct sequel. In order to capture the killer, detectives seek out the help of Michael Myers, who would be locked up at Smith's Grove Warren County Sanitarium. That's right, folks. 
the Halloween franchise was transforming into the Silence of the Lambs with a side of Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning. After Jamie Lee Curtis signed on, the story was tweaked and the title changed to Halloween Blood Ties as they involved Lori Strode into the storyline before scrapping the idea entirely. That's right, folks. H2O was kind of the hint of what we were going to get in the Halloween trilogy that we just got over the last few years. And it seems to stem from Jamie Lee Curtis wanting to always to end this franchise. A franchise that gave her stardom, the franchise that people will always remember her for, she wants to kill off. Now, I'm a little pissy about it because as you can see here, this is the exact knife not screen use, but from the first Halloween. And it's signed by mostly everybody in the movie, including John Carpenter himself. Person missing, Jamie Lee Curtis. Actually, the only person missing is Jamie Lee Curtis on this. I don't know if I would want to get her on this knife. Now, I'd be stupid not to because that's going to increase the value on this knife. There's not that many of them out there. In fact, this is probably the only one. It comes with a gorgeous stand. But... Man, every time I hear her talk about Halloween or horror and all this other stuff, just really irks me. Yeah, it's like she's so unappreciative of the genre and the movie that gave her her start. So I, I feel like she's, um, yeah, she's just being a spoiled little brat. Yeah, and there's interviews that I've heard her talking about Halloween and her role in it and just reminiscing about it she always seems to kind of talk like hey you know i kind of made this movie more than what it would have been without me it just seems like she has that a bit of an ego when it comes to halloween honestly let me tell you you did a series of horror movies you were a screen queen appreciate it because the fans are going to appreciate you but halloween would have been better with somebody else in that role now, they only brought her in not because she was a great actress. They brought her in because she was the daughter of Janet Lee. And lo and behold, let's kind of build off of our marketing off of that. So that's why they brought her in. Yeah. But I really never liked Laurie Strode. Though she was kind of an okay character. Too whiny, too moany. She didn't even really scream that well. And then the new Laurie Strode that we got. God, I really hate her now. Yeah, I... <laughs> I was never a fan of Laurie Strode, never considered her to be like this, you know, final girl. She is not a good scream queen because she doesn't scream well. And she got her start in the movies because she is the daughter of Janet Lee, who was in Psycho, and Tony Curtis, and everyone knows who that is. So you didn't make the movies. The movies made you. Yeah, I am always going to be a Team Sydney as the ultimate highest point final girl Absolutely. in her franchise i think sydney played by nev campbell and especially the way nev campbell appreciates her fans yes. and respects the genre she is number one for me jamie lee curtis is probably top five let us know in the comments who your top five final girls are yeah but all the craziness with this movie huh mm -hmm. different titles yeah. different stories it really almost seemed like what they were what they did in the Slater's trilogy that was going to happen here I mean, a copycat Michael Myers <sighs> with a uh, now smart Michael Myers behind jail is like, oh, let me help you solve the case. Yeah, Come so on, now man. all of a sudden, does he not only talk, right, but now he's going to help you solve the case. Yeah, what was he going to do? Draw pictures? Yeah. Like, hey, Michael, we know you haven't talked in like 20 years. Yeah. But maybe you can help us catch this guy who thinks he's you. Yeah. And I mean, what education does he have? What, what grade was he in when he got locked up? Like first or second like so now all of a sudden he's super intelligent and he can help you solve a case when he has like an elementary school education mm -hmm. ridiculous yeah so and then what's with that one lord of what like lord that of the dead? Yeah. oh yeah that remind that sounds like lord of the dance <laughs> so i just i can't that's a terrible name you think he's gonna bust out one of those irish jigs yeah that's what i mean like that's what it sounds like to me that's just terrible i don't yeah. like that at all yeah, unfortunately, with this movie, it came out, it kind of retconned the other three films in there instead of trying to cleaning it up. 
at least Kevin Williamson would have had, you know, showed respect to the franchise. It's like, all right, well, we can kind of mention it and kind of keep it a part of the whole thing. Where Jamie Lee Curtis is like, nah, get rid of it. We don't want. It. Doesn't make sense. Just toss it up, right? Yeah, I just feel like she didn't appreciate it at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, maybe I don't know. Are you tired of the Halloween franchise? I will tell you, writing this and getting it ready to be edited, kind of want to go and watch all of them again kind of put myself through some pain for a couple of those films but let us know in the comments do you, oh, you like mean the new ones yeah <laughs> part six and yeah. resurrection yeah. unfortunately for the weight that michael myers has in the halloween franchise name just being so you know prominent out there in the horror genre it's really not a good franchise no. Yeah, when you think about Nightmare on Elm Street, and you think about Scream, and you think about Evil Dead, you know, Halloween's even almost... Saw. Yeah, even Saw. Halloween is starting to teeter towards the Texas Chancellor Massacre. Halloween well, has never been uh, in my top, so... Well, Michael Myers has always scared you. He scares me when he's standing in the shadows and just staring, but... The movies have never been in my top. Oh, boy. I think it's one of my Halloween memories. You should go and check that out. If I can find it, I will put it up at the end of the video or floating around in the link here about what happened when Jen ran into Michael Myers. Anyway, if we missed any facts behind H2O or we got something wrong, let us know. Drop it in the comments. And don't forget, it's a couple things that you need to do. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Yes, please do. And until the next Pop 5, see, see ya. ya.